My grandmother was a major influence on me. While my mother was working, and I was an infant at the time, she would look after me. Nana would look after me. And she was a pianist. She was a singer, a soprano, music educator. And so from the time I came home from the hospital, I was hearing music. She began teaching me uh, little lessons on the piano, but sadly she passed away from a stroke when I was five. And, but my parents already noticed that I really was gravitating towards the piano. And so they found a local teacher, Dorothy Early, who began working with me. But there's one thing I want to share with you that I will have shared with a few people. Um, I inherited a lot of her music. Years after she passed, my grandfather brought it to me. And uh, there was one tablet of writing, and I just kept it in a, in a drawer. And I had already begun performing music by cl black classical composers, composers of African descent. And one day, I just happened to come across it. She had written an essay called The Negro in Classical Music. And in this essay, she mentioned R. Nathaniel Dett. She mentioned William Grant Still. Now, when I read this, and I have since had it laminated and framed in my music room, I was already playing these composers. And I really felt that not only was this her last will and testament from, for me, but that she was reaching down from heaven and saying, you're on the right path. I was told that there was a wonderful teacher in New York named Sylvia Rabinoff. And I was told this by the orchestra conductor in my elementary school. And he said, I would like to introduce you to her. Maybe she'll take you as her student. And so my parents liked the idea. She had asked that I would bring in a couple of pieces of different styles, composers. And I had to know every major and every relative mi minor scale from memory. And we, I remember like it was yesterday, we went to New York for the audition. She had two grand pianos in her living room, two Steinways, and I played for her. And um, after I played all the repertoire, she asked me different questions. This lasted almost three hours. The last segment, she said, I want you to play that Mozart Turkish march again. And no matter what I do at the other piano, I want to see if you can keep going. She improvised a whole second piano part to this piece. I passed the audition. She began working with me. I had lessons twice a week. But the important thing about studying with her was she taught me, or began schooling me, what it meant to be an artist. She asked me one day, shortly after I began working with her, do you want to be a good piano player, or do you want to be a concert artist? And I already knew I wanted to be a concert pianist. She said, if you choose the latter, it's going to be hours of work and sacrifice. She began teaching the, what I call the old schooling, not just how to play Bach or Chopin correctly, but for example, to be open to all types of foods. Now we know we can go to Europe and there's a McDonald's in every corner. But back then, she said, you must be open. She said, I'm having borscht for dinner today and I'd like you to try it. And I was like, what? She said, no, no, no. You have to be open because when you go to travel, you never know which are going to be served. And there was the, also the idea of thinking like an artist, where it's not just the practicing, but how you live. How is your body in shape? Did you get enough rest last night? Have you been reading different books about different uh, 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 authors? And so um, one of the things that I do now is I tell my students I'm passing on to them all the wonderful knowledge and information and love of music that these people passed on to me. And it was following her instruction, two or three years after I started with her, I played with orchestra for the first time at 16 at Brevard Music Festival. And then a year after that, made my debut at Lincoln Center, playing a full concerto, Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto, with 90-piece orchestra, 
the symphony of the new world, and I was 17 years old. And so now I've gone across the country performing this, excuse me, lecture recital where I not only play the music, but I discuss it with the audience. I share with them the different background of the composer of the piece itself. And, and it's wonderful because no one, you see, when we have music appreciation classes throughout the country, we may include, or professors may include Scott Joplin's The Entertainer, maybe William Grant Still's Symphony, but that's about it. And you see, one of the things that this concert promotes is balance. That, you know, African Americans can do any type of music. Not just rhythm and blues, jazz and gospel, but classical works, piano works, symphonies, choral works. And, and it's surprising that, you know, people throughout the country don't realize it because, well, first of all, a lot of the schools now have diminished music programs. I'm talking about the public elementary schools. Uh, so right away, Bach is not even being taught as much. And, and it's sad. And, and also, another sad uh, incident that's happened is that many churches now don't have their choirs sing classical anthems. That everything is gospel music. And there's nothing wrong with that. I play gospel music, I love gospel music, I teach gospel music. But we're talking about balance. And the unfortunate thing by the, for the church to do this is that once upon a time, all music lessons began in the church. If you scratch the surface of any opera singer uh, prior to 1970, they will tell you, I learned music in the church. I learned Rossini's Inflammatus in the church. I sang the William Dawson spirituals in the church. And so now, not only are students and African American students not getting this in school, they're not getting it in the church. So I'm trying to just do whatever I can to let people know that we do everything.